Okay, how's it going, guys? Um, get, let it, people get a little bit of time to get in here uh, before we start sculpting. Okay. So, um, for those of you who haven't been here and those who have, uh, I'm Jared Chavez. Nice to meet you all. Um, I am a senior character artist in the game industry. Um, and what we like to do on this stream is just kind of work through making different things. What we've been working on over the past two streams has been um, this dog anatomy study that I've been doing. Um, so we primarily worked on, you know, blocking out kind of the front half of it. This back half still needs to continue on the process of the block out, but to kind of change things up a little bit today, um, I was planning on instead just kind of sculpting the head or at least working on that area to kind of start to, um, push this a little bit further since a lot of this stuff is kind of a little bit slower and in placing some of these shapes and things So I felt like that might be a little bit more uh, more interesting for us today. So that's kind of what I was going to focus on um, As always if you guys have any questions feel free to throw them in the chat I'm more than happy to chat about whatever you guys want to talk about um, You know whether that be art video games, movies, game development, questions about being a character artist, different things like that. So feel free to let me know and we can, uh, you know, talk about whatever. So um, so to, in kind of blocking out this dog, I wasn't really sure the breed of dog that I was going for, which I kind of should have planned a little bit better because um, I'm a dog person and, and I actually have an Australian cattle dog, but they're kind of stumpy looking, uh, like short legs, short body, like their proportions are all kind of condensed. So I feel like that was kind of a little bit skewed towards um, something a little bit different where this is kind of more of a generic dog. So I was leaning more towards like a German short haired pointer for what I'm going to end up using as kind of like reference for um, the facial structure and things like that. So that's really what we're gonna focus on now. Um, and a lot of that's just gonna kind of come down to combining a lot of these things together and just dynameshing them. And then I'll start to uh, kind of sculpt from there. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna start moving all of the pieces of the head down. And then I'll just dynamesh all of those and then that'll allow us to kind of, as a starting point. Okay, so from right here, so let's do this. And as you can tell, there's no ears yet. Um, those will come. I usually don't worry about those just yet because they kind of obscure some of the, uh, the head. So I just want to make sure that I have kind of all those basic forms and things in place before getting too crazy. Okay, that one's there. Okay. Let's see, I think that's everything. Um, this. Okay, so now we're gonna just start merging everything down. And we should hopefully have all of the proportions that make up the head. Um, okay, I'm missing a couple of pieces. So this, and then this piece, and this piece. Okay, so let's merge all of that down, and I think that's good. Okay, cool. So that now that just gives us like the primary block out for the head, so we can kind of just continue to refine from here. So um, as you can tell, there's like different densities between all of those me these meshes at this point. That's totally fine. I'm not too concerned about that. Um, primarily what I was trying to do is just get some of these major forms in place because now if you look at it it's like from here it it has semblance of a dog it looks like a dog without ears which is what I want um and so now I have some of the major things like relevant to the skull in there you know like the masseter and then there's um the zygomaticus which is like a, a tendon that's gonna like help pull um down here on the um the jowls area. So I have a lot of this stuff kind of already in place and, and it's in a pretty good 
starting point. So let's just go ahead and dive right in and get started. Okay. So we'll do a little bit more resolution than that. Okay, that should be fine. So this is going to just give us a starting point, and I'm just going to continue to kind of build up a lot of this uh, look and kind of just continue to build in some of the forms and stuff. So I have some reference up over on my other screen as well, um, which I'm kind of focusing on using. So if you're curious where I'm getting some of this information from, that is where I'm getting it at. So... Like I said, the nice thing about going through and doing a lot of this kind of like initial block out is it gives me a good amount of like of a starting point to kind of work off of, which obviously it's not perfect, but it's something which is good to do. Which actually let's make sure that this is symmetrical because that could be a problem okay yeah so it wasn't entirely symmetrical but that's fine How's it going, everyone? Um, so for those who are just getting in here, continuing the work on um, the dog sculpt. Hope everyone has had a good morning or wherever you're located at, whatever time of day it is at this point. For me, it is early morning. get some eyes in here as well so one thing I will tell you guys um, part of the reason why I'm doing this process is because this is actually a part of the process that I'm not very good at um, I have a tendency of kind of just sculpting. I just kind of dive right in and sculpt. And for a really, really long time, the model kind of looks like crap, um, which I feel like in a lot of ways, this can kind of alleviate that to some extent. Um, it, it doesn't look great. You know, it still looks pretty mushy, but you're, you're definitely at a better starting point than uh, you would be without it, which is... One reason why I kind of want to work on it, um, you know, it, it gets you a good starting point quicker. So we'll turn all of that other stuff off, make sure that we have symmetry on. And let's start to continue to build out some of the zygomatic right here. Now what we're going to do for, this is one of the main questions that I tend to get when it comes to um, like Dynamesh and things like that. Like, oh, well, how long do you sculpt in Dynamesh? Uh, most of the time I just sculpt until I get to a point where I'm happy with it, I guess, um, until I kind of like have a good sense of like the volumes and things. And then usually I'll start to Z remesh from there. So like right now I'm not at a point where I could Z remesh. Um, but it's it's not too long that I tend to spend in um, in Z remesh or in Dynamesh because I feel like you know I like to get in there and refine forms pretty quickly. So it's usually not too long that I'm in this phase, and I usually like to do my uh, my form like refinement on. Um, with actual clean topology, so. Thank mm -hmm. 
give him some eyelids. Knock back this angry eyebrow and get some eyelids in there. Oh, okay, yeah, so something is thrown off on my axis. That's not right. Um, huh. Okay. Um, that is a problem. Now, the thing that we're going to do to fix it is we're going to do that. And so we're going to dynamesh these two together. Uh, merge down. Okay, so that should hopefully fix our issues. Let's make sure real quick. Yep, that looks the same. Okay, yeah, so that's uh, that's definitely uh, happened before, but you know, lots of tools to figure it out. Um, I really like the way that you blocked out the forms. Thank you, Lord Bain. Uh, Mirror will. Yeah, that that's another option. Um, that's the great thing about uh, ZBrush is there's so many different ways to kind of do any given thing, you know, so. Okay, let's get some of this a little bit better formed out. And so you'll notice that I kind of move back and forth between a couple of different brushes. Um, I have a couple of brushes that I like to use uh, to kind of sculpt my forms and stuff, but most of them um, are mainly just to get like a lot of volume in there. Right now this snout is like really thick. Those eyes don't look great, but they're not going to for a while. Boom, there we go, finished. It looks like a dog, right? No, it, it doesn't look that great, but. You know, they, I, I really wish that um, I was one of those sculptors that was like really, really fast. I feel like that's uh, an area that I've always wished that I had the ability to do is kind of that speed that some people display when it comes to ZBrush, and I just am not one of them. I feel like it's a really long time that my that my models just look kind of ugly, you know? Okay, let's get some of the shape up here. And so for right now, we're going to get um, two little tiny ears just to represent something. These are not going to be the actual ears that we end up using um, since we're going for like a pointer, but it'll just give us something representative of ears at this point. Boom, ears. That just kind of like at least gives us something there. So, because I, I feel like when I um, when I have a tendency to sculpt, I don't know about you guys, but when I sculpt, um, and if I don't see all of the pieces there, I kind of get like this weird disconnect. And especially with eyes, I think eyes are always a big one. It's a hard for me to kind of like get the the artist goggles on and look past um, what something looks like, you know. I kind of get caught up on those features, and so that's that's actually one thing that I like to do in any time I'm doing like faces is getting eyes in there as soon as possible, um, and like getting some texture on them if I can, because I feel like that really helps kind of like ground them and make them feel a little bit more uh, believable. So. As per usual, for everyone who's just getting in here and stuff, feel free to 
ask questions, uh, you know, about whatever you guys want to talk about. If not, then I just kind of ramble about stuff. So if there's things you're curious about, I am more than happy to talk on. Any of you guys do anything eventful over the past weekend? I know it's Tuesday, so it's like kind of already almost halfway to the week, but I uh, went and visited Seattle for the first time, which was cool. I was able to go up for work and um, see Seattle. I'd never been there and, you know, got to do all the touristy things, which I'm sure if any of you guys follow me on Instagram, um, that is what my stories were all filled with, was just Instagram of going to all the different places in Seattle, which was cool. Hey, how's it going? Uh, okay, so just get some of this shaping in here for the eye. Right now, this bottom eyelid is definitely too far forward, but we gotta kind of scoop out some of this upper eyelid. Which, yeah, for any of those, anybody who's interested in going to Seattle, I definitely would recommend it. Really cool. Um, one of the cool things we saw was the uh, uh, Museum of Glass, um, which I, like a couple of years ago, I think it was during like COVID when everyone was trapped inside and stuff, I um, I was watching a show on Netflix about glass blowing, which was really interesting, really cool to see and like just kind of how they go about doing it and things like that. So uh, you know, ever since then, I kind of have like an interest in glass and, in you know, the, the sculptures and things were really cool, really impressive. It's crazy. Like the colors that they can get out of, um, out of glass. Cause like, they're like so vibrant when you actually see them in the real world and stuff. And so super cool to see, super pretty. Um, so yeah, definitely check that out if you guys decide to go. Knock some of this back. Get this portion knocked out. I have a couple of facial references that I'm kind of going off of. They're, the faces for uh, pointers are very, um, very expressive. Got like those really dramatic kind of eyebrow arches. Let's scoop out some of this area. These eyes need to be a lot bigger. You know, dogs, they got those big prominent eyes. Also, I think another reason why I am not good at working in Dynamesh is I feel like I just get like kind of caught up um, with like what the topology looks like and things get messy and it's just harder for me to kind of resolve my forms. Um, always a great starting point, but I'm not the best at resolving inside of Dynamesh.
so they tend not to have quite as big of like masseter muscles so I'll have to tone that down a little bit uh, do you use reference images yes um, I like to use reference images I'm I'm not like a I'm not smart enough to sculpt from memory um, so I always use reference images, even if it's like simple things. And, you know, I think that this is a great example of why. Because um, if I was to like sculpt a dog from memory, I could get like maybe like 20% of the way there. Uh, but I, I definitely wouldn't be able to get the rest of the way there. Yeah, so like I have a whole um, reference board that I have up. So I'll bring that up in just a second to kind of show you guys what I have on there. Okay. Um, yeah, so here you can kind of see what my reference board looks like. I just have some like anatomy sculpts, um, some style, like some things that I thought were interesting for like kind of maybe finishing it. And then just like some anatomy, um, anatomy reference. So like I have the skeleton, the muscle breakdown, and then someone who's done like a, a German short haired pointer, um, so this is kind of like another point of reference. And I have some like real, real life reference to kind of key off of. So as you can tell, still a long ways to go, but uh, we will get there. It'll just take a long time. Uh, which as I mentioned, you know, like all the people that I see on streams and stuff who like sculpt really quickly, oh man, that is, that is just not me, you know? I, uh, I'm definitely much more of a, a slow sculptor. Um, like even in personal work, even if I know for sure what I'm doing, I am, I'm not a fast sculptor. So like all those people that are part of like the, the ZBrush sculpt off and stuff. Oh man. Every time I watch it, I'm just a little bit envious cause they're all so fast, you know, but it is what it is, and hopefully uh, with some more practice, maybe one day I'll get there. So you'll notice I, I, my eyes continue to kind of like keep darting up. That's just because I'm checking my reference, you know, kind of getting ideas, seeing things, observing what I see. It's crazy because you think like, oh, animals, anatomy can't be too hard, but it's difficult. It's tricky. I would say, especially like when it comes to the faces and stuff, that's always the hardest part. Um, getting a getting a good face out of them is always tricky. But that's why I wanted to do this stuff is I felt like, you know, I can learn, you guys can learn. It's all another way to kind of just learn together, you know. Um, what is your, uh, are you using a pen tablet or a pen display? I'm using a pen display. Um, I have a Cintiq 24 Pro, QHD Pro, I think. I don't remember what the model is. Um, I've had it for a couple of months now. Um, but yeah, I have a display tablet. I've, I've sculpted on both. Uh, when I do, um, when I like work away from home, I use an Intuos. Um, and then when I am at home, I have a display tablet. So I, for a long time, I had a Cintiq 24 HD, I think was what it was. Um, I bought it like when I was in college because I was like, oh, I, I knew I really wanted to do this. And I thought that that was like a tool that I kind of needed, which it, it is. Um, you don't have to use a Cintiq if you don't want to, but um, I, I did. Okay, so I'm going to just try and shape these ears a little bit more. Um, where 
sneak hook. There we go. This dog looks like it can fly. Inflate, thicken this up a little bit. Maybe that's not great. All right, let's go back to the move brush, kind of just get these in a little bit more. Okay, uh, what's your approach for sculpting big dog mouth like Mastiff? Um, same sort of thing. I mean, honestly, this is the first time I've sculpted a dog in, pff, what year is it? I don't know, almost like eight or nine years probably at this point. Um, it's been a while since I've sculpted a dog. So that's, again, part of the reason why I'm doing it is uh, just as like refresher. I haven't done it in a long time trying to work on anatomy, you know, um, if I, I get a lot of people that ask me like, Oh, what do you, what do you recommend when trying to like learn creatures and stuff like that? And, uh, animal anatomy, I would say is huge. Um, because of the fact that like, if you know animal anatomy, if you know human anatomy, you can really like make pretty much anything. Um, so that's that's kind of what I what I recommend. That's part of why I do it. So um, I can relate to a lot of being slow. Yeah, I, I get it. Being slow is is definitely something that uh, I struggle with, you know. And especially like doing streams and stuff. I feel like that's what's hard because like I don't know from the outside in. You guys probably are like, man, this guy's really slow. It takes him a really long time to do anything, and and it is true. Um, it definitely does, but you know, not everyone can sculpt at the speed of light like some of the people on stream do. So maybe it's a little bit of a different uh, change of pace for you. Uh, hey, how's it going, man? Um, do you work for a company? Yes, I do. I work for um, I work for Firewalk Studios. So I am a senior character artist at Firewalk Studios. Um, prior to that, I was at Turtle Rock Studios working on Back for Blood, uh, but I'm no longer there. Um, yeah, it's like kind of hard to gauge like how some of the these ears are like folding over themselves because they're all so big, but. That's part of why you do things like this is because then it forces you to study. Uh, just joining, I need to go back and watch the recording. I've been wanting to try sculpting a pit bull. Yeah, definitely a great, great idea. Um, lots of great stuff to be learned um, by sculpting animals. Lots of good stuff. Like right now, I'm learning things. I am having to practice things that I am not super comfortable with, but you know felt like maybe it's a good thing to see someone squirm on this channel a little bit. Hey, tell me about your journey. Where did you start? Um, yeah, sure. So uh, for those of you who don't know, my name is Jared Chavez. Um, I am in the game industry. It was kind of a long road to getting here. Um, I graduated high school in 2011. I'm taking you guys way back. Um, so yeah, I graduated high school in 2011. And when I was in high school, I got introduced to the idea of 3D and I was like, oh, this seems really, really cool. I think that's what I want to, I want to study. And so then um, I had a friend who introduced me to Blender and I was like, oh, this is really cool. Yeah, this is, this is like for sure what I, what I want to do, you know? Um, sorry, one sec. Uh, so yeah, that I kind of decided then I was like, oh yeah, this is, this is what I want to do. Um, and luckily there was a program at the school that I attended, uh, 
uh, that was starting up. And I was like, okay, this is what I'm going to do. I went there, studied, didn't really get the information I needed to be a character artist. It was kind of like intro to Maya, advanced Maya, and advanced Maya wasn't like it, it covered like a broad subject of things. So during that time, I was attending, uh, after I, like towards the end of my college career, I started attending CGMA. Um, and all while I was at CGMA, I was working at a contractor doing like VR stuff. So that was my first job, uh, doing 3d for a living was at a, um, contractor doing VR work. And it was like mostly environment stuff. So I was kind of like, I wanted to be a character artist, but I was doing environment work. Um, so that was kind of how it started. And then while I was there, I was taking CGMA classes, which if anyone is curious, I am an instructor at now. Um, so if you're interested in learning texturing for games, uh, check that out, because that's what I um, am an instructor for there. So I was taking classes at CGMA because um, I knew I wasn't ready when I graduated high school, or not high school, obviously high school. When I graduated college, I knew for sure like I wasn't wasn't ready to actually get into the game industry. And I had heard from multiple people like, oh, you know, the the best indicator whether you're ready is if you can take your portfolio, you can put it up next to people that work in the studios that you want to and see does your work hold up. And for me, you know, I had a lot, a lot, a lot of self-doubt. Um, and so I was like, no, it doesn't like, I got to keep working on my portfolio. I got to keep getting it better. I got to keep getting better. I got to keep getting better. And so that was kind of my mentality. And, uh, so I continued to kind of take CGMA classes and I took those classes like they were candy. I took probably like 10 or 11 of them. Um, and I just still never felt like I was ready. And then at one point I finished all the classes that I could take for characters and I decided to do environment classes and so um, that was that kind of just stemmed from the fact that I uh, was doing environment based work uh, at the job that I was at so I was like well maybe I can like kind of improve on that front so that's what I did so I started to take environment classes um, and well, sorry, this is like the long roundabout way of getting there, but I think it's it provides some information and it kind of gives me like stuff to talk about while I'm sculpting. But um, so where was I? Uh, yeah, so I was doing environment classes all while I was still working at my first job doing 3D. And um, while I was doing that, I decided to take a mentorship, which uh, was a really great opportunity. And then once I'd finished my mentorship, I was like, okay, like now's where the hard stuff kind of begins. And I decided that I needed to start like really just getting portfolio pieces in um, because if I wanted to get a job, I, I needed a portfolio. Um, up to this point, I had like student assignments <clears throat> but I have like a mixed feeling when it comes to student assignments like it's cool for learning purposes but you should be able to take that stuff and kind of like apply it to your own work you know um so I <clears throat> excuse me sorry let me get a drink real quick so I kind of decided time to start working on a portfolio I'd finished my mentorship I was still working at that first job and I decided um, there was an art station challenge going on and I was like, oh, this, this could be a cool opportunity to like get some knowledge, I guess, you know, like learn, make another character that could fit into my portfolio. And so I decided to participate in that. And then uh, by somehow I, I managed to win, which was awesome. Um, it was the Wild West Challenge in like 2018, I think it was. Um, so mind you, at this point, I'd graduated high school in 2011. 2018 was when I won that contest. So like I'd been doing 3D for a while um, at this point, uh, but still didn't really feel like I was 
qualified, I guess. And so I won that challenge. And then when I won that challenge, um, I got contacted by some different studios like Respawn and uh, Turtle Rock. And so then I ended up going to to Respawn, or not Respawn, sorry. Uh, Respawn said, no, we aren't going to take you. But that's fine. You know, that's, that's part of... Um, working at studios and jobs is you just have to know that you're going to get turned down. And so they, they had come and contacted me asking if I was interested in working for them. And I was like, yeah, sure. And then I interviewed and then they said no. And then I talked to Turtle Rock and they were like, yes, we want you on the team. And so I was like, yeah, awesome. And so that's kind of how I got into, um, into games. And so I was at Turtle Rock from 2019 until, uh, the beginning of this year where I left and I came to Firewalk. And so during that time, I helped on the development of Back for Blood, um, which if you haven't seen it, go check it out. Uh, I was responsible for like a bunch of the different humans and creatures on that project. Um, I'll bring up my portfolio here after a little while and we can kind of get an idea of some of the stuff that I had done on that project. But yeah, and then this year I jumped over to Firewalk where we are uh, working on a game called Concord, which was uh, recently announced at the last um, showcase for Sony. So that is where I am at now. Uh, let's see. How uh, How's it like working with Jay Hill at Turtle Rock? Great. Uh, Jay's, Jay's a good friend. Um, he was... <clears throat> someone I would consider like a mentor, you know, he helped me a lot, uh, in terms of like just art in general, but also getting kind of like the YouTube stuff rolling. And, um, he's, yeah, he's been a, he's been a good kind of mentor figure for me when it comes to this stuff. So good dude, really, really knowledgeable guy, very, very smart. Um, so yeah, he was, he was great to work with. Definitely enjoyed my time with him and the rest of the team at Turtle Rock. Uh, glad to see you streaming here too, Jared. Big fan of your work as always. Thank you. I, I appreciate that. Um, all right. So yeah, I, I'll catch up on the questions here in a sec i just have kind of kind of want to knock some of this stuff out see so this is always like the hard part on on a lot of sculpts like this is like there's never any pictures of the underside of a dog's head so i kind of have to like figure out what it is i'm what i'm looking at you know what's under there But yeah, so hard, sorry if that was like a big old long spiel about how I got to where I'm at. But, you know, I, I personally, I feel like it's always good to like hear that stuff because when I was in college, I like kind of was always clueless as to how, um, you know, people were getting to where they were. Like I would see people's portfolios and I'd be like, man, like they're so much better than I am. Um, you know, why? Like I'm never going to catch up. And in reality, that's that's not the case. Um you just have to, I mean, you definitely do have to put in the work. You, you can't really get into the industry without like a good portfolio. Um, but it just takes people a long time. So I like to talk about that journey and stuff because I think it's really helpful for hopefully helpful for people to kind of get an idea of, um, you know, how, how someone gets into the industry. So let's see. Uh, hey, Jared, I wanted to go abroad and work in the game company as a junior character artist. How to know that if my portfolio is good enough for them or not, my country doesn't have a game company. Um, yeah, so that one's hard. So especially for junior artists, uh, there's not a ton of junior artist position in the game industry. And especially right now, um, and a lot of that stems from the fact of like just kind of the 
economy and how things are and a lot of studios have been laying people off and and aren't hiring so if you go and search for one i will admit it's probably a little bit hard right now to find a junior position they it's not an absolute that they don't exist but definitely difficult um but uh so how to know if your portfolio is good enough um i personally i would take the advice that i said a little bit earlier uh your mic has some background noise okay let give me one sec and let me see if i can fix that real fast um Um, I know that there is a way to do this, which I apologize. I always seem to have, uh, issues when it comes to noise. Um, okay. Does that sound a little bit better? Hopefully that sounds a little bit better for you guys. I just put the noise suppression on my headset, so hopefully that works. Um, but yeah, back to my original point. Uh, when do you know your portfolio is good enough? I honestly, I take the advice that um, I was given and that that I know that that's probably not what everyone wants to hear. Um, but if your portfolio is good enough, you know, you should be able to put it up against someone that works in the industry and kind of determine um, like, does my quality level match that? Because ultimately, that's what studios need, is they need people that um, can ma make the quality of the project that they are working on. And if if you can't, then they you probably are going to have a tough time getting a job. Um, you know, like, it, it doesn't, unfortunately, it doesn't come down quite as much to just, like, can you sculpt a character? That's great, but, like, sculpting a character and sculpting a character well are kind of two different things um so you just got to be able to do all of the steps of making a character so um retopology uvs texturing high poly modeling uh getting it and getting it into the engine um making a decent presentation is is definitely a plus um so yeah i mean it's it's tricky it's definitely hard um, but you know, I, I would say pick a studio that you like. So for example, um, if someone was to be like, oh, I want to work at Naughty Dog. Okay, cool. I would go find people that work at Naughty Dog, find what their portfolios look like and compare it to that and also build a portfolio in the same manner or using kind of the same styles that they have in there because that's going to ultimately help you in the interviewing process as well because if you send like blizzard a portfolio um that has like naughty dog style renders in it they might be like oh wow this dude's a great modeler but like this doesn't really help us you know what i mean um so you you definitely oops uh definitely have to kind of send the studio the kind of um style that they are making so that's also another tip that i give everyone uh don't don't stick stuff in there that isn't gonna be beneficial to the studio you're trying to um apply for so hopefully that helps um uh hey jared can you fix your microphone because when now when you speak you're an annoying kind of noise yeah hopefully that helps um if it didn't please let me know uh, cause I, I, yeah, like I said, I apologize for the noise. I've had to deal with this with the other mic, but I wanted to use this one cause if I use the other mic, then I can't use the camera. So just know for the future, I'm trying to get all of this figured out. I'm, I'm looking to, uh, get a nicer mic here fairly shortly. So hopefully I can, um, yeah. Uh, can you talk a bit about the process of the cinematic on the Concord teaser, how it was done? Uh, Unfortunately, I, I can't really talk about that project. Um, I can say that I'm working on it, uh, and I can say I work for Firewalk, but in terms of all that stuff, I can't really say much. So sorry about that, Marks, uh, Marksman. Um, let's see. Uh, finally, some artists who 
slowly came to his position. I have a lot of doubts about my works and a lot of people around who seem to be creating such works from the beginning. Um, yeah, that's just that, that happens. Um, that's kind of the, the deal with everyone. I think most people, it does take them a lot of time. It's, you just got to remember a lot of people go through journeys that we don't see, you know? So I definitely compared myself to a lot of artists when I was younger. And, and now I don't really do that because I'm like, it, what's, what's the point of it? It doesn't really make a difference um, to me. So I kind of just make myself my own competition, you know, like I'm in competition with myself every day, you know? So, um, that's what I would recommend doing. Just be in competition with yourself. And if you're getting better than you were yesterday, then you are getting better. And that's ultimately the goal, right? You know, it doesn't, doesn't matter if someone else has a job. You just want to get good enough so that you can get those jobs. So that's what I would, what I would recommend. Uh, well, I mean, I think we made progress so far. It definitely looks more like a dog than it did in the beginning. So that's, that's good. Still got a ways to go, but, um, let's see. Let's get a look at some of this area. Oops. Using the wrong brush. I just noticed that the music that I was listening to just stopped, which is unfortunate. So these, I think, are going to come down and connect here. Um, if you have an NVIDIA 3000 series or better, you can download NVIDIA Broadcast and use a noise AI and it'll solve the issue. Okay, cool. I'll keep that in mind. Um, yeah, I have a 4090, so hopefully I should be able to use that. Um, your renders in Unreal are so crisp and well executed, especially your rendered creatures. Any tips for those sweet skin renders? Uh, sorry if I'm going on tangent. No, totally fine. Um, yeah, honestly, keep asking questions. It makes everything on the stream run smoother. You know, the more the more questions that are asked, the less it is of me just like rambling about uh, my weekend and, and going and seeing things. You know, and, and just talking about that stuff. So. Um, I'm more than happy to answer those questions, so keep them rolling. Um, but in terms of Unreal, Unreal's tricky. So uh, it's tricky because it's not the best engine to like take a picture of. Um, and so that's part of the reason why I use Marmoset so frequently, is because Marmoset has like really easy tools to... Um, like take pictures and I prefer how easy it is to set them up uh inside of Unreal uh or inside of Marmoset sorry I'm I'm distracted because I'm like trying to find pictures of like what the ears look like for these uh this type of dog I probably should have picked a dog that didn't have big floppy ears because it would have made my life a lot easier but um but yeah so it, it's not the best when it comes to rendering out images mostly because you are using like I I for a long time I was using the high res screenshot uh modifier which is fine it'll get the job done um but Unreal has uh an inclination of crashing when you use that um, depending on how high you go and what kind of GPU you have and stuff like that. So I've used that in the past. Like that's what I used for a lot of my other projects for the, uh, Neomorph piece that I did. Um, that was, um, that was done with the, uh, what's it called? Um, the movie render queue, which if you're curious about that, uh, shoot, I'm going to forget what his name is. Uh, William Foucher go check out William Foucher's channel and he has like a, a tutorial on setting that up, I believe. And also I think Jay even has a video on, on his channel inside of Unreal and setting that stuff up. Um, but that's what I would recommend using now because essentially what you can do is you can take like four pictures at like high, high res and then it'll stitch them all together. Um, so it just kind of allows for uh, more of an opportunity to um, 
get like a higher nice quality render out of it and so that's like what i did for the neomorph piece which still haven't released yet but um yeah that's kind of that's kind of what i did for for those ones so um but unreal is is a pain to kind of get good looking images out of so but if you can get them it is it's nice to nice to get them so um let's see uh everyone has their own pace and you know sometimes life just happens yeah that is true i mean it, i had my own pace when it came to getting into the industry i have my own pace when it comes to sculpting and they're both set to uh extremely slow uh not a fast sculptor not a fast uh life doer um but you know that's just who i am and i made it work so anyone can make it work um Let's see. Was the retopo on Back for Blood creatures more challenging than a regular character? Uh, ye... honestly, probably not really. Um, I w I wouldn't say it was more challenging than like a regular character because like if you think about like creatures, for the most part, you're just dealing with like flowing topology. So like you know for for the most part everything's organic so it's not super crazy whereas like topology for a uh, human like with gear you're just like having to retopologize a lot of different aspects of like hard surface things cloth at like cutting in wrinkles so it's it's a little bit more um tedious whereas like cr the the creatures they they weren't they weren't too bad also i don't think i retopologized most of them um i think that like a bunch of them were outsourced if i remember um there were some that i did but majority of them i didn't have to didn't have to handle which was which was great i am very thankful that i didn't have to handle them because if i don't have to handle topology i i don't necessarily want to so yeah Um, let's see. I was just, uh, pursing through your portfolio. The baby Yoda is so cute. Really like the P, uh, the BR. Uh, thank you. I, I appreciate it. Um, yeah, that was fun. And, and the funny thing about, uh, kind of like career trajectory is I really originally had the intent of like always doing realistic stuff when I was first starting this out. Um, I didn't really want to do creatures, and I think part of that stemmed from the fact that I was, like, nervous to do creatures, because uh, creatures, you know, you have to be a little bit more creative with, um, and I didn't feel like I necessarily have that creativity. Um, clearly, this whole stream is just about, like, my self-doubt, but I think it's interesting to clue people in on this stuff but um you know creativity doesn't really like just spark with me you know i i kind of have to work at that um that muscle you know that creative muscle and creatures were one of them um but so for a long time all i really wanted to do was people or human type of things um and then as i've gone along because i i used to just do a lot of like portrait style work because it's kind of hard to mess up a human if you know how to do a human um and then as i've gotten gone along in my journey and like on back for blood i had to make creatures and so that was a muscle that i had to learn how to use um and then 
I also have kind of more so pushed into doing stylized stuff over the past couple of years. And so like the baby Yoda one was one of the first pieces that I did. Um, that was that kind of stylized hand painted. And now I do that's, that's pretty much what I do in my free time is, is more stylized or creatures. I don't really do human, uh, stuff all that often in my personal work, but that's mostly just cause like on a day to day, that's what I do at work. And so it's a nice, um, nice change of pace to not, not have to like do human characters all the time, you know? And creatures are a lot more, again, creative. And and now I feel like I've kind of worked those muscles enough that it's a lot more fun for me than it is uh, stress to like kind of figure things out. I think um, creatures are very, very difficult. Uh, they're d difficult to get to look good. Um, I would by no means call myself like a master at creatures. I just enjoy them at this point. Um, but they're a lot of fun. There's a lot of creativity that you can have. Whereas like a person, you can't really have too much, too much creativity. You know, every person is going to look like a person and, you know, you don't really have that much of an opportunity to kind of like flex, uh, different muscles when you do them, you know, you can make them a little bit more stylized, but for the most part, not too much. Okay, well, I think we have something that at least looks like a dog, so that's good. Heading in the right direction. It's always the fear, right, that you're going to make something and it's not going to look like a dog. Um, Uh, sorry, got caught in this, caught in the sculpting there for a second. Thanks for the response. I'm currently sculpting myself, so it's nice to be able to chat with you on stream. Yeah, of course. Uh, do you have any resources that you'd recommend for learning look dev and texturing? Uh, for texturing, um, there's a, a couple of resources. Uh, I mean, I have a YouTube channel. Um, where that's pretty much what majority of the work on there is. Um, and I have a couple of more projects that I'm working on uh, for videos where I'm going to talk about texturing and things like that. Um, also, I teach a class at CGMA. Uh, that's that's a site that I would recommend, though, for, for learning texturing. There's some good resources on there. Um, let's see what else is there. Texturing is a hard one because I think uh, there's there's resources, but it's not as well documented as like um, modeling is there's not like a lot of like things like this which would be cool if there was um let's see uh jason hill he has a bunch of content that you could probably learn some texturing from um william foucher is a good one his is mostly <clears throat> mostly lighting and things like that but i'm sure he has some stuff on there that you could find um let's see i'll go to my youtube watch list and see if i can find any good stuff on here um, my channel library watch later um let's see so mark brunette i mean he's more of a, a concept artist but you can learn stuff from him um the Substance channel has a lot of good stuff. I definitely would recommend that. Um, Stylized Station, you know, has some has some stuff on there you might be able to check out. Um, yeah, texturing is a hard one to give too much on. I can't really think of any off of the top of my head that are like very specific. Um, but I would go like watch the Substance 
substance days videos or any of like the videos where it's someone at like a conference or things like that and showing how to texture um those ones are always really useful that's kind of like where i pulled a lot of my information from they give like small little tidbits of information but like i feel like you can really extrapolate a lot of stuff from those demos so i would definitely recommend checking out those if you haven't um let's see maybe some other stuff will come to me Um, yeah, those are the only ones I can think of right now. Um, let's see, let's go back to my actual, like, reference reference and see what we can see. Uh, uh, could you offer a place where I could find a mentorship or get feedback? Um, there's the mentorship coalition, which is a good, uh, site. Obviously you have to pay for those. Um, I think that that's for mentorships. You're most likely going to have to pay, but if you're fine paying, uh, the mentorship coalition is a good one. Um, CGMA also has some, mentorships that they offer on there or at least they used to i think that they still do um so i would check that out um let's see where else is there there uh bruno bruno uh, i'm forgetting what his last name is um he offers one um Bruno Camara, I think is what his name is. Uh, he offers one. So, but his is, um, his is also paid. Yeah. So most of them you're going to end up having to pay for, uh, but there are some options. I think that those are the ones that really kind of come to mind though. Um, let's see, uh, if I wanted to get started in 3D modeling, what's a good starter software? Um, I mean, there's a lot of options. Um, if you're just trying to get started, I mean, Blender's free, so you're not losing anything. Um, I think you also have the ability to try out like uh uh zbrush the uh, i or I, that's if they still offer it zbrush one or I, I don't remember what it's called but they're like base level it's also a good option it also depends on what you want to do um 3d modeling is very very broad so if you just say 3d modeling that can mean like i want to be a weapons artist or like hard surface artist um, I want to do creatures, I want to do characters, I want to do low poly, uh, hand painted. So I would de delineate what you want to do. And then that can kind of help inform which, um, softwares you'll want to learn. If you want to do something like character art, um, I think, you know, Blender has a good option for like the 3d tools. ZBrush is the best option when it comes to, um, sculpting. Um, so yeah, just kind of depends what you want to do. Uh, let's see. 
Yo, it's the goat. Uh, thank you. I appreciate it. Uh, I'm doing good. How are you doing, Serb? Um, hey, Jared, I'm confused with UV mapping for real time. Notice that some artists apply separate materials to the body and the head and UV map them separately. Yes, that is 100% true. It also depends on what it is. If it's like one contiguous mesh, uh, yeah, you'll still separate the model into um, multiple texture sets. Um, so like, for ex I can give an example real quick to uh, illustrate. Actually, I have a, I think I have a piece that um, I should be able to show. Um, yeah, this piece. Um, let's see, where are the texture sets? So yeah, I had a two different texture sets. So I had one for the head. Um, actually, no, I lied. This one, the, the way that this one was set up was, um, two texture sets. So this one was texture set for the skin and then everything else. Um, but let's see if I have another piece that I can show. Uh, do I have that information on here? I don't remember if I do. I don't think I actually do, but I can still illustrate on here. Um, let's keep going, keep going. I think that might be the only image that I have on here. Um, but, uh, yeah. I guess this is probably going to be the best best way to show it. Okay, so on this piece, um, I had this split up into like the head, the jacket, the undersuit. This thing was associated with one of those texture sets. Um, but no, they aren't all on the same UV set. They're all uh, on different texture sets. If you were doing something like with one contiguous mesh, like this piece, um, you could do like a texture set for the arms, a texture set for the torso, a texture set for the head. So that'll give you more resolution. Um, but the thing you'll run into with that is you're going to run into seams, which usually are fine. If, if you're careful, you can paint over them and it's not a big deal. Um, or you could like fudge a workflow with UDIMs to do that. Um, but yeah, that's, that's usually uh, the reason why is because you're just getting different texture sets. Uh, thank you. Your works are great and nice to hear you're here. Yeah, thank you. I appreciate it. Um, so they get separate texture sets in Substance Painter and higher resolution, but how they bake their character in such case because UVs are overlapping. Uh, the texture set separates the UVs. Um, so like if I have the head and the torso, they're both overlapping as long as I have a material that's assigned to the head and a material that is different that is assigned to the body, it'll separate those uv sets based on the material so that's how it um yeah um jared could you give me your working interface please um i've had that question asked before i i should probably put it up somewhere i just never have um i don't really think it's all that great honestly because like 90 percent of this stuff down here i don't even end up using i need to do like a rehaul of it um because i pretty much only use this stuff maybe a little bit right here but majority of this stuff i kind of forget that it's that it's even there so okay, let's try and get a little bit more done before the end of this stream
See, sorry guys, I kind of just get uh, caught up there for a second. Have you done any characters for cinematics rendered in Arnold or V-Ray? Um, yeah, I used to. Um, I used to do a lot of my characters in Mental Ray and V-Ray um, back when I first started doing characters. Um, I used to want to work in cinematics and film, but... Uh, I did a character in Marmoset and I was like, oh, this is so much better. I don't have to like worry about um, like render times and things like that, which is a big reason why I don't, uh, what like kind of shifted me to games is I did not want to do that anymore. Um, I don't like having to like make a change, click a button, go back, fix it, make a change click a button, go back, fix it. You know, it's kind of like a tedious process of, of using an offline render. And now the results for, uh, for game engines and things are so, so good that I don't think I would ever go back. I've, I've occasionally told myself like, maybe I should just do one project in, in Arnold just to like get a taste of it. Cause I haven't used Arnold for like a full character. Um, but yeah, I don't know. It's kind of hard to outweigh uh, the time savings for a game engine, you know? Um, let's see. Yeah, so I'm not going to be able to, or I'm not going to weld the ears onto the head for a little while because that that could just become super messy. So I'm going to kind of just try and like at least carve in where the ear hole is. Um, yeah, wasn't the best choice deciding to use floppy ears, but you know we're this steep now. Gotta live with it. Let's get back to some of our other better reference. Um, so we'll probably go for like another 15 minutes or so. So if you guys have any last burning questions, feel free to throw them in. And I feel like this isn't a good reference for this kind of plane change, is that? Yeah. A little too sharp. This dog kind of feels a little bit too, a little bit more like dopey and doe-eyed. So definitely don't want to make a lot of these angles too, too sharp. Because then it starts to feel mean and that's not what we want. These eyebrows are the main thing. Um, let's see. Have you decided which Pokemon you're going to make next already? Uh, no, I have not. Um, I still have to finish up Gengar. I'm not done on the texturing and I'm not done on the rendering yet. Um, so I still have a little bit of time to kind of figure out which one I want to do next. Um, I'm definitely open to suggestions if any of you guys are have been watching the streams and stuff and are following that series um love to hear any suggestions or any thoughts i think right now um i thought about maybe doing 
uh, Dragonair or, or Dratini um, just to maybe like knock out the line. But also like Vileplume was pretty cool. Um, Lickitung has always been a really good one that Oakley did. Um, so yeah, I'm not sure yet. Actually, Jinx. Jinx was pretty high up there. I really liked what he did with Jinx and thought that that would be like a, a nice little um, deviation from what I did on uh, Gengar. So that one I think is probably close to the top. I want to pick one that's like not super complicated, but I ultimately end up telling myself that every single time and then it ends up taking me freaking forever to actually like sculpt it. So um, yeah. I feel like if I wanted to at this point, I could probably do a topology on this, but or a Z remesh at least, but we'll keep it. Uh, wow, was that poly painted? Um, the Pokemon? Is that which one you mean, Nat? Or actually, I, I guess I can answer that question. No, uh, I, I don't do any poly paint. I just, I always use Substance Painter. Um, for my works, so. So anything you see on there was not poly painted. I've never really done stuff in poly paint. Um, not very good at it. Uh, you know, as you guys can probably tell, I, there's a lot of things I'm, I'm not great at. But that's why we practice. So maybe in the future I'll do something purely in ZBrush and do some poly painting on it. But Uh, if I wanted to gain more followers slash attention, is taking a classic character and making a realistic, cooler version of it a good way to go? Um, so, uh, that one's hard. Um, so, uh, you know, we could we could talk hours about, like, gaining a following and doing things like that, um, which with the time left, I guess we'll, we'll chat a little bit about it. Um, gaining, the way that I found success to gaining a following is you could go about like just doing what's popular. I think that that's usually, um, you, you'll probably find some success in it. The way that I found success in, in gaining attention slash following really stems from the fact that I kind of planned things out. So last year I did an art station learning course. While I was developing that, I was like, okay, well, I know that art station is going to be putting this out. It's going to be getting seen by a lot of people. So maybe I should take it as an opportunity to, or first off, create a YouTube channel. So I, I that's when the YouTube channel started. And it was purely because I thought that that might give me like a boost in momentum. And it gave me a boost in a lot of things. It kind of got my, got me viewership on my Instagram, which while that was growing, um, I was also able to kind of like funnel those new people into YouTube with like the stuff I was putting out. Um, and also like, you know, uh, so, so that's kind of what got my like initial liftoff going. And then from there, I just continued to kind of like push out content. Um, I put stuff on Instagram, uh, every single day. Um, it doesn't have to be anything special. doesn't have to be anything great, but like if I make a piece and show it and then I show that same piece, like a month later or whatever, I've gained more followers. So there's more interaction. So it's kind of like this self-fueling machine. Once you, once you have enough content to start to, uh, start to show. Um, so yeah, that, that is kind of what I would recommend is once you get like that initial momentum, just continue to ride that wave. And so like I started with, I had like 2000, uh, followers on Instagram, like last September, I think was when I kind of started doing it. And same with YouTube. That was when the YouTube channel was at zero. Um, and from then I met like 23,000 I think on Instagram and, and like 
almost 8,700 on YouTube. Um, and the, the 8,700 on YouTube, that was like from, I think like August to December, I tried to hit a thousand. And then once I hit a thousand from that till now is when like I gained those extra 7,000. So it all starts to kind of compound on itself. So that's, that's really like my, um, formula for, for trying to get attention and putting things out there, um, to get more eyes and viewership. So hopefully that helps. Um, that, that's what I would recommend. But yeah, I do think, uh, a new version of classic characters will get attention if, if people like it. Um, yeah, so I, I, I don't think it's a bad thing to do. I also think, like I said, doing what's popular in, in the mainstream right now, like, uh, you know, maybe if you made like an Oppenheimer piece or like a Barbie piece or, um, what else is really popular right now? Um, a Zelda piece. Zelda is still pretty hot. Even the Into the Spider Verse pieces. You know, like doing doing pieces that are based on stuff that's trending in pop culture. I think is usually kind of a a good um, a good way to to kind of get viewership. You know, people people interact with those things when they're um, when they're new and, and prominent in people's minds, you know, so. Social media, uh, and like art station and Instagram and all those things, they definitely take a while to get off the ground, but once you get momentum, um, you can, you can keep it rolling. I mean, shoot, I've milked it for almost going on a year. Um, and I will continue to milk it until, that that spout is dry but it was a good opportunity and honestly that's part of why I, I think I was able to do these streams was because I was uh so active in posting things frequently and um you know the right person saw it and then they were like hey would you like to do this we see that you do YouTube and you're streaming on your own channel would you be interested and I was like yeah it'd be a great way to kind of get my stuff in front of more people so that was kind of the uh approach to my madness um you know some people probably can say that there's better ways of going about like getting people to follow or whatever but mine is kind of the slow and steady wins the race it works you know so hopefully that helps um do you have a breakdown somewhere about the uh how you textured that sars uh sarzen sarzen hand uh you did it's amazing uh no i do not have a breakdown of that anywhere i did that um i think in like 2020 or sometime around there uh during during covid and that was never documented which i wish i had because i think that that's like one of the pieces that a lot of people really like um so yeah um I don't. I, I have planned on maybe doing another one on my YouTube channel because uh, I do get requests about that one a lot, and I think it would be useful. But honestly, it's nothing really special. It's just hand-painted. I just painted it in um, inside of Substance Painter, and that was that was really it. There's not really much to it. Uh, it's, it's honestly probably one of the simpler pieces, which is also one reason why I like to do some of the more stylized stuff is because I feel like those have a tendency of being simpler pieces and people like simpler stuff a lot more than overly crazy uh, realism unless the overly crazy realism is like something new that they've never seen before. So uh, especially this water effect on his wings. Oh yeah, the, the water effect was cool. Um, that was, yeah, like I said, all painted inside of, uh, inside of substance painter which if you're curious about that character um i did make a youtube video on it so you can see more of the process on that on my uh, youtube channel which i'll bring up here in just a sec once we start to kind of wind down Oops.
Okay, cool. So yeah, I think we're going to call it here on this guy. So let's save this real quick. Um, and we can see the progress that we made. So it was progress, may not have been, you know, uh, like a complete sculpt. It never, never usually is, but we were, let's see. So we were at this to this. So definitely progress, still a long ways to go, but getting there. At least we have something interesting to kind of look at at this point. So, um, so yeah, three streams. Like I said, I'm a slow sculptor, guys, but here's where we were on the first one to the second one. We also changed orientations in that one and then to the third one. So uh, we'll definitely pick this one back up once we uh, hit the next stream. I'm not sure when that one's going to be, um, but keep an eye out for it. It'll probably be sometime next month. Um, usually I try to do Tuesdays. So that's kind of what I'm thinking for next month. Um, but in regards to socials or anything like that, if you're interested, um, you can find me on Instagram um, at jared.chav. Here's my Instagram. Uh, I post here very frequently. Here's the, the current piece that we're working on, um, which funny slip, I accidentally streamed this, uh, on the ZBrush channel on accident, um, uh, like two weeks ago. So if you saw me texturing that and heard no audio, I apologize. That was a mistake on my part. Um, and then in terms of, let's see, uh, YouTube, like I said, this is where you can find, um, a lot of tutorials, different content. Here's some of the, um, the videos here's the dragonite one where you can see me working on that inside substance painter the sculpting all of that stuff um so make sure to check this channel out and then lastly you can find me at jared chavez on artstation uh and here is all of my work in my portfolio so um yeah check those out if you guys ever have any questions or anything like that feel free to reach out to me i will do my best to answer questions and get back to you guys. Um, but thank you guys for stopping by today was a great turnout. Lots of great questions. Hopefully you guys learned something. Hopefully it, you know, was enjoyable. Um, but yeah, again, thank you guys. I will see you.